All right, we are now going to finish up the 8A notes. Now, before I say the denominator right here is always the index. So rewrite without rational exponents, that means I need radicals. So since the denominator is a 3, so that means the index is a 3. So it's the third root of 27 squared. Um, you could type this into your calculator. Um, you could actually could have typed 27 raised to the two-thirds power just as this, and you get 9 as well. But I do want you to notice something. Now, from unit 6C, we all should remember that 27 is a perfect cube. So really, 27 to the two-thirds power, 27 is really 3 to the third power, then I'm going to raise it to the two-thirds power. Now, if doing a power raised to a power, do you remember we multiply exponents? Now, 3 over 1 times 2 over 3, the 3's cancel, and I'm really left with 3 squared, which is equal to 9, and that's what we get on here. But you could type in the cube root of 27 squared. You type in 27, you could literally type in 27 raised to the two-thirds power of the calculator. All three of these ways will get you nine. If you want to practice with your calculator, type your, typing these different things, that would be very good practice. Now that was all numbers, so I come out with a real number. This next one, we have variables, so I'm not going to be as lucky. But remember, the denominator here is the index. So this is the ninth root of, and so then it's just going to be x to the fourth y to the fifth. And that's all I need to do. <coughs> Just rewrite it without rational exponents. Now it does say simplify. This first one does simplify. This next one does not. <coughs> the square root of 11. Now this one, remember, it. Oh. the index is not written here. So it's an invisible 2 here. Now, the 11 doesn't really have an exponent. It's an invisible 1 there, isn't it? So, really, this is 11 to the 1 half power. Now, just on your calculator. Now, this one, you can't do much on it. But this next one, you should be able to see. If I do the square root of 25, remember, that's a 1 there and a 2 there. So that's really 25 to the 1 half power. Now, if you type that in, it should give you 5 as well. So please take a moment and try to type that in. <coughs> All right. This next one. Again, now we're going backwards here. Here, remember, the numerator was the index. So this is the index. So this is really a to the 3 over 6. And this is b to the 12 over 6. Now, both of these fractions reduce. This is a to the one-half power, and this is b to the second power. And so now I've used the rational exponents, and now I've simplified here. Now this next one here, again, this is an invisible index here. So it's really, the most important part here is keeping the 7m and in parentheses, then it's 3 over 2. So again, I just wrote it with rational exponents. Rational ex exponents mean there's no radicals. Now we're going to do a simple review here of the law of exponents. I did a little review up here when I did a power raised to a power in question number six here. But now here, that we're doing a base times base. The bases are the same. So I really multiply, I'm sorry. When the bases are the same, I add exponents. So if I do 3 fourths plus 1 eighth on my calculator, I end up with 5 raised to the 7 eighths power. Now this next one, I have the same bases and I'm dividing. So this is when I subtract exponents. I do 7 fourths minus 5 fourths, which is 2 fourths. But 2 fourths reduces to a half. So this is really 3 to the 1 half power. Now here, I know this my the font on the, the Word document is not the greatest. 
this is really 6 and 3 fifths raised to the 2 seventh power. So it's a power raised to a power, so I multiply, so the base doesn't change, and this is just 6 over 35. So it's 6 to the 6 over 35. Now this next one here, again, it's a power raised to a power, so I multiply, and I, when I multiply 3 7 times negative 7 8 I get negative 3 8 Now we all should remember we don't want negative exponents. Now we should also remember how to make a negative exponent positive since it's on the top. I have to move it to the bottom. So it's 1 over 6 to the 3 8 Okay. So, so far this is weird, but it's not too bad. Okay. Now, what they want us to do, they want to write it in rational exponents to simplify, then go back to radical notation. So if I write this again, this is always the denominator. So this is really a to the 6 over 8, which reduces to a to the 3 over 4. And so now I go back to the radical. Again, the index of 4, I mean the 4, the denominator is the index. So it's the fourth root of a cubed. Now this is a much better one. This is x to the 15 over 5, and the reason why it's so nice is the fraction goes away, so it's just x cubed, and that's my answer. I don't have to go back to radical because there are no radicals in here. Everything works out perfectly. Now this next one, again, again the most common mistake, like the early one, you got to put the a, b in parentheses, and then it's really 25 over 5, so that's really in parentheses, AB to the fifth power. Okay. Now these next two are the difficult ones here in this section here. Uh, the last one's not too bad, but this one is more difficult. Because when I rewrite it in um, rational exponents here, this is really 8 to the one-fourth power times 5 to the one-third power. Now, in all the other ones, the bases have been the same, so I just add the exponents. Now, what's mean about this, the bases are not the same. So I have to attack this a different way. Now, what I really want is I want my denominators to be the same. So once my denominators are the same, then I have the same index and I can combine them. Now, what's the common denominator between 4 and 3? Well, that's 12. So for this one, I have to multiply top and bottom by 3. And this one, I have to multiply top and bottom by 4. So this is really now equal to 8 to the 3 twelfths times 5 to the 4 twelfths. Now my bases aren't the same, but my denominators are now. So what I can do is I can rewrite this using 12 as my index. Then it's 8 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th. Now, I've already done this on my calculator, but I just type in 8 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th. So I get the 12th root of 320,000. Okay, and that is my answer. Okay, it actually looks better when it started than when it ended, didn't it? Okay. But that's how you do it. When the bases aren't the same, you want to try to get the common denominator here, my exponent, so then I can just rewrite it as one index. Okay. And this next one is going to be very similar to that. Okay. We're going to have here, it's going to be x raised to the one-fourth power times, in parentheses, 9x to the one-fifth power. So, Bases are different, so I gotta find the common denominator. Now, 4 and 5, it's 20, so here I gotta multiply top and bottom by 5. Here I need to multiply top and bottom by 4. So I have now x to the 5 twentieths times 9x to the 4 twentieths. So I have this common denominator of 20, so that means my index is 20, so I'm doing the 20th root of x to the fifth times 9x raised to the fourth power. 
Now I can actually do 9x to the fourth power. So it's still going to be the 20th root, x to the fifth times. Now 9 to the fourth is 6,561, and then x to the fourth is just that. Now I have x to the fifth, x to the fourth. Now those bases are the same. I just add the exponents. So it's the 20th root of 6561x to the ninth power. Okay, so that's how I'd combine those. Now this last one, before I get to it, I want you to notice on the indexes here, when I multiplied the fourth root of eight, the third root of fifth, I ended up with the index of 12, didn't I? 4 times 3 is 12. This next one here, 4th root of x, 5th root of 9x. 4 times 5 is 20, and that's my index there, isn't it? So really, the shortcut to this one, it's really just the 32nd root of xy. But really what we're doing, if I just look at the inside here first, this is really xy raised to the one-fourth power. Then if I look at the bigger picture, this is really a one here. So then it's being raised to the one-eighth power. So when I multiply my exponents here, this is really xy to the one-thirty-second power, or simply 32x, the 32-second root of xy. I would advise you just instead of writing out the long way, you just multiply the exponent, uh, the indexes, and then you get your answer. So that's really the end of 8a. Uh, These last couple questions were quite difficult, and I expect lots of questions in the homework.